Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by, come on now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Stromont, and I got a rant right now. I'm doing an instant reaction to this Florida State University. Florida State Seminoles get their asses kicked again. Boston College travels to Doak and puts a savage beat down on the Seminoles. I told y'all last week, you did not listen. You didn't listen. I was very, very clear. I said, this is a dumpster fire. I said, DJ Uyangalele should be benched. When they decided to make him the starting quarterback and go get him from Oregon State and get and not keep Tate Rodmaker, not use Brock Glenn, not use the guys that have been recruited into this program, you made a mistake. DJ has shown you who he is at Clemson, at Oregon State. He is an inaccurate passer. Oh, today, what did he do? 21 of 42. 50% completion rate. Ah, yeah, he had a couple dropped. Didn't help. But overall, he's not good. He's completely inaccurate. One touchdown, one pick. The touchdown was a play where a wide receiver breaks a tackle, another tackle, and basically drags dudes into the end zone. But Boston College just ran the ball right down Florida State's throat. It 263 yards rushing, 19 first downs, 369 total yards, only 106 yards passing. Get this number. Time of possession, 3909 to 2051. That was the time of possession in this game, Boston College to Florida State. This was a wipeout, and it was a wipeout from the beginning. First three possessions from Florida State, three and out, three and out, three and out. You're watching the throws that they're allowing DJ to make. Underneath, 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 short patterns. Yes, as the game went on, they, they they let him throw deeper. He made a few throws here and there. But overall, he has no command of this team. They have no running game. They rushed for 21 yards on 16 carries. There's no balance on this offense. 42 passes to 16 runs. Defense. I didn't, you know, yardage wise, yardage wise again, it's not a crazy number. It's that these guys just can't get off the field. But they also can't get off the field because they're on the field the whole damn game because the offense can't sustain drives. How many plays? You got 56 plays one way. Sorry, was that 50, sorry, 58 plays? And then the other way you got uh 52 runs and 16 passes. So you have 68 plays to 58 plays, but Boston College gashed these dudes. And you know, it's one thing to, to, to read where the predictions for the, the you know the best teams in the ACC are made. And I mean, God, dog, every every prediction that I looked at from Athlon to 24/7 to CBS Sports, every one of them has FSU one, two, or three. Every single one of them, one, two, or three, FSU is not going to win six games if they don't make a decision on this quarterback situation. They might not win six games even if they do make a decision on this quarterback situation. But reality, they can't stop the run at all. Like, at all. You know, I, I didn't real. I mean, I thought that holding Georgia Tech to 190 is a win. BC just rushed for 263. And this was a 28-13 game. I mean, BC put their knee on the ball at the six-yard line, could have punched it in to make it 35-13. FSU is down, what was it, 21-6. They put up a score to make it 21-13. You have a little energy at Doak, and then they immediately commit a personal foul. 
They give possession, a time of a good field position to Boston College. And then what happens? Boston College marches right down the field, eight plays, 60 yards, seven runs, one pass. The one pass was an incomplete pass. Otherwise, seven runs right down their freaking throats. Right down their throats. Castellanos for 15, Thomas Castellanos for 10, Trey Sean Ward, former Florida State football player who's down at Boston College, 23 yards, Kyle Robichaud, 5, Kyle Robichaud, 3, Kyle Robichaud, 2, Kyle Robichaud, 2. This was the drive. Punched it right down their throats. They had 10 men in the box and couldn't stop the run inside the 10. They had 10 in the box and couldn't stop the run. Their interior defensive tackles are terrible. I don't even know their names. Don't even care to know their names. I don't care what their names are. They talk about the defensive line is supposed to be good for Florida State. Their defensive ends might be good. I know Peyton, you know, Patrick Peyton's out there, uh, number 11. But defensive tackle play, linebacker play, awful. They were getting pushed off the ball the entire game. The entire game, they're getting shoved off the ball. That was a beatdown. That was a physical beatdown. And I don't see how FSU can fix this. I mean, Darnell Jack, Daryl Jackson was a former Miami Hurricane player who's playing for Florida State now. And in Miami, he was good. He was real good. He wasn't good today. <laughs> he was not good today. Not at all. Not at all. FSU stinks. Like, they stink. And I told y'all this last week, this is a dumpster fire. You didn't listen to me. I said six and six, seven and five at best. This... And it was all predicated on their quarterback. After having watched this game, they've got much bigger problems than just their quarterback. Although he is a major part of it when you start the game off with three possessions for not for for and nine plays. Three possessions, nine plays. Even on the first possession for Boston College, they moved ball 35 yards, eight plays. FSU, three plays, four yards. Boston College, 14 plays, 71 yards, touchdown, 7-0. FSU, three plays, four yards, pun again. Boston College, seven plays, 68 yards, touchdowns, 14-0. Uh, Florida State, three plays, eight yards. They fumble. They fumble the uh, – there was a fumble on the – I don't know what the fumble was here. Uh – yeah, no, no, this is just bad. Then, I mean, Boston College punted. FSU gets a field goal. Boston College punts. FSU gets another field goal. The, there was a throw in the in the back of the end zone on a, on a, on a what it was like a post corner that DJ, the receiver is absolutely wide open, and Will Young Lale throws the ball in the end zone. That is wide open by ten yards. Ten yards. And the man throws the ball out of the back of the end zone. Uncatchable ball. He, he, he made many bad throws. Uncatchable balls. Yes, there was a couple dropped by 84. Um, what the hell is 84? His name was supposed to be a reliable player. Again, I'm not an expert on Florida State football, so I don't know all their names, so forgive me for that. But I, yeah, watching this direct that we saw today, my God, that was uh, da, 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 Kyle Morlock. Yeah, he dropped a couple back-to-back -back possessions that were pretty costly. Um, but I guess he was so not used to having the ball thrown to him that it surprised him. <laughs> it's they're bad, man. They're bad. They start off the second. They start off the second half uh, with a pick. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that was the that was the you know the pick on a. Uh, yeah, this one is the one that made no sense to me at all. This made no sense. FSU gets the ball, start the second half. They move the ball to the 45, 47-yard line. They go for it on fourth and five. I, I mean, 
It's 14-6. Like, this is the stuff that Mike Norvell, he made some decisions that don't really understand. It's 14-6. I get it. Your offense is struggling. You, your offense isn't very good. Even less reason that you're going to go for on fourth and five from midfield. You would play a field position game in this situation because you clearly your quarterback's failing to do his job or, or in, unable to do his job. So instead of punting, trying to pin Boston College down inside the 10, you go for it. And it's returned to the freaking seven yard line of Florida State on an interception. So not only did they not get the first down, the man damn near threw a pick six that's returned to the seven. And two plays later, FS, uh, Boston College is in the end zone and it's 21 to six. Next possession, FSU, punt again, three plays, six yards, punt. This is the one where I was a little surprised with Boston College when they were at midfield, fourth and three from the 47, from their own 47, and they decided to punt. I thought they would go for it. I'm, I really don't understand why coaches, when you're at midfield and fourth and less than five, I don't know why you would not try to always hard count it. Try to get them to jump off. You, you never know. You never know. At midfield, 40, between the 45 and the 45, I see absolutely no reason whatsoever that teams don't hard count and try to get teams to jump off sides. Because what's the worst? Take the five. Don't call timeout. Take the five-yard penalty and then punt it. What's the difference if you're punting from the 50, the 45, or the 40? What's the difference? What's the difference? There's no difference. You might as well freaking go. You might as well, might as well try to hard count their ass and see if you get them to jump. So they don't. FSU gets the ball. This was the best drive that FSU had the entire game um, with, uh, with with DJ Uyunglele with making a couple of good throws. He made a throw, good throw to Kentron Portier, Portier and for 29, and he made another good throw that actually turned into a touchdown that Portier broke a bunch of tackles to score to make it 21-13. But this is the point in which you're looking at and you're sitting here saying, FSU needs to freaking gear back on defense. And what happens? They commit a personal foul for the kickoff. For no damn reason. So now the ball's at the 40, and BC goes eight yards, 60 yards, eight plays, 60 yards right down the field, runs the ball down their throats. Again, another situation that I didn't understand. The next possession, FSU has the ball down to the to the BC 39. It's fourth and 16. They're at the BC 39. It's 28-13. There's 13 minutes to go in the game. Punt the ball. Punt the ball. What are you doing? Instead of punting the ball, Norvell decides we're gonna go. You're gonna go for it. Why would you go for it on fourth and sixteen from the thirty-nine yard line? It's twenty-eight, thirteen. I'm not saying you have a good shot to win, but the odds of making a fourth and sixteen when you can barely complete a five-yard pass, very, very low percentage percentage chance of that happening. Of course, it doesn't happen. Those are incomplete pass. And they turn the ball over on downs. Even for, I mean, BC got stuffed on three plays. This is another one. BC then decides to throw the freaking football. And I'm sitting here like, what are you doing? You're up 28-13. You only ran one minute of clock off the, off the board. You should run the ball. They can't stop the run. And you decide to throw the ball twice and have two incomplete passes. So you don't really run any clock off. But that was a, th a three and out. But then what happens? FSU. Gets the ball at their own 13-yard line, and they go three plays minus two yards. Another three and out. FSU had one, two, three, four, five. Five three and outs in this game? Five? That's bad offense. That's bad offense. Last week, FSU fans were telling me, oh, well, you know, they didn't get a lot of possessions. Well, today you had a lot of possessions. Even in a situation where you had the, where, the, where the ball was in the hands of Georgia Tech for almost 40 minutes, you still had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten possessions, and half of them you were three and out. That's why you only had the ball for 20 minutes. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't do anything. And even in the possession when you you, you scored on, on in five in five plays to make it uh 21-13, you only held the ball for two minutes. 
Minute 58 to be exact. I, I tell you. And then, okay, now it's where it gets even more ridiculous. So Norvell's gone for it now twice on fourth down in the second half, right? Gone for it twice. He's gone for it twice. Been stopped twice. What was it? Seven and a half minutes to go in the game. And they're at the they're at their own 36. It's fourth and 20 after it was third and 10 from their own 49. Um, there was a penalty on TJ Ferguson from FSU for uh unsportsmanlike you know conduct, personal foul. So now instead of being a third and you know, whatever it would have been, it would have been third and five, fourth and five. It's now fourth and 20. So he punts the ball. Why? You you went for it twice. Now there's only seven and a half minutes to go. Now you got to go for it. And he punts the ball. He gave up. Norvell gave up. And you want to know what's crazy? FSU didn't see the ball again. Boston College ran it 11 times for 60, was it 65 yards? And they get down to the FSU six yard line, the four yard line, actually. The four before they, they, they just ran it out. They could have scored again. They ran the ball. One, no gain. 18 yards, no gain. Three yards, 16 yards, four yards, no gain. 35 yards, and then it's, they just kneeled it out. FSU's got problems, bro. I don't see the weapons on offense around the quarterback, but more so I don't see a quarterback. So I don't know how good those weapons can be. Number one is pretty good. Portier looks pretty good. Portier looks pretty good, but they got problems. <laughs> they got problems here, man. FSU, they really, really went for it all last year, and uh, they got screwed. They were should have been in the playoff. Obviously, it, it was disappointing for them, but everyone said that they were a top three team. People were picking them either to win the ACC championship or to come in second or third at worst. Third at worst. FSU has now lost two of the bottom feeders of the conference back to back to start the season. No one has picked Boston College higher than tenth or something like that in the conference. One one I think it was twenty four seven had them seven had them last. Two four seven had Boston College in their early preview in February or so last in the ACC. So there's a lot of problems that like, you're not just losing to the good team. You're not losing to good teams. You're losing to teams that are bottom teams. And, you know, when I listen to, to Lewis Riddick on the broadcast saying, well, Boston College is not, it's a good team. According to who? I think Thomas Castellanos is a good running, athletic, mobile quarterback. He's not winning you games with his arm. He's winning you games with his legs. Boston College is probably going to be a 6-6. Six and six. Seven and five type of team, probably. They're not world beaters, but they sure as hell look like world beaters tonight. Beating up the Seminoles and making them look I, six and six. I don't think FSU is going to win six games. You look at their schedule; it's messy. It is messy for the Seminoles. They play Memphis next week at home. Memphis is one and zero. Oh. And, of course, right now it says match your predictor for ESPN is 86.1% to 13.9%. Memphis is 140-0 over North Alabama. They play Troy uh, this week. And then oh, FSU has a, a week off, so it's next week. Um, it's the 14th. But what was Memphis's record last year? Memphis was 10-3. and three. Memphis typically scores lots of points. Like last year, 56, 37, 28, 27, 35, 21, 45, 45, 59, 44, 34, 45, 36. They score points. One thing I think we've noticed from Florida State, they can't score points. They can't score points. I'm not saying FSU is going to lose to Memphis, but, but then you got Cal. At SMU, Clemson at home, Duke at my at Duke at Miami versus North Carolina at Notre Dame. If FSU wins six games, I'd be surprised. Now I'm I'm thinking more like four and eight, 
this they look like they look like a four and eighteen. I would be surprised if DJ if if Mike Norvell does not open up the quarterback position for competition over the next two weeks. If he doesn't, he's going to lose the team because DJ Uyangala is not good. He's not good. He's not good enough for you to sit here and say I'm not. I can't explore a quarterback situation here because last week I was told by FSU fans, oh, he was 19 to 27. Well, you know what he was today? 21 of 42. That's the guy that played at Clemson. That's the guy that played at Oregon State. That 19 is 27, that pot, that powder puff, you know, manufactured, throw the ball underneath for five yards type of quarterback situation. Man, mm -mm -mm. this team is not – this team has problems. And if that quarterback position is not up for, up for you know, someone to win that position, you're going to lose that team. How you feeling, FSU fans? I'm a Hurricane fan. I actually was a big supporter of Jordan Travis last year. I liked him a lot. Thought he was really good. Um, good dude. But my God, this is this is one of those things where it's like, I don't know how you can predict going from 13 and 0. I don't even count the Georgia game. 13 and 0 to absolutely horrible. They're they're horrible. I don't know how it will turn because if you're watching film on this on this team, they can't stop the run up the up the middle. These weren't wide runs. These are like right, these are just gash you up the middle. Let alone done by a former Florida State running back. Anyhow, that's all I got on this topic. Boston College 28, FSU 13. Let me know your thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Like, subscribe, and follow and ring that bell. Come on now.